In today's show, it's a mailbag episode answering your questions about who the Blazers should start when everybody's back and healthy, who should play when the game's on the line, and the biggest development for the remainder of the season. Welcome to Locked On Blazers. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Trail Blazers, your daily Portland Trail Blazers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, world? It's your past first point guard and trailblazers reporter, Mike Richmond. You are listening to another episode of Locked On Blazers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, available wherever you get podcasts and also on YouTube. Thanks for making this show your first listen, coming at you each and every weekday, Monday through Friday. So make it a part of your daily routine. Make it your first listen. Tell your friends to do the same. It's Locked On Blazers, your team every day. Today's episode, a special delivery mailbag edition of the program. If you want to get involved in a future mailbag, the place to do that, there's only one, LockedOnBlazersPod at gmail.com. Send me an email, LockedOnBlazersPod at gmail.com. There's actually a second one. I lied. Um, if you play in the pickup game I play in, um, I might ask you for, I might ask you to help me develop content. Um, you folks know who you are, who both listen to the pod and play uh, pickup hoops. But I did get a question in person that you're going to hear later in the later in the show. But you know the pickup games like invite only, and they're not even my invites to give out. So if you are not one of the select few, locked on Blazers Pod at gmail.com is the address. One more time for you, locked on Blazers Pod at gmail.com. We're going to answer questions about who the Blazers should start when they're fully healthy, who they should start at the end of games when it's close, and the biggest development to watch for the remainder of the season let's start with the starting lineup this question comes from listener jonathan who notes i look forward to amphrey simons coming back but there is some concern from jonathan do you think a healthy ant sends brogdon back to the bench to play with scoot henderson or does brogdon remain the starting point guard and shaden moves to small forward i don't really think it matters much but who should start? If anything should change, what should it be? Thanks for the question, Jonathan. That was heavily edited from like a four paragraph email. That's what I like about emails. You could ask long questions, get long answers. Um, you know, Amphrey Simons is going to start when he comes back. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm a tea leaves guy. I, I like this is and this isn't even tea leaves. This is like a flashing neon sign. Yesterday during uh, the broadcast, Brooke Olsendam had her pregame interview with uh, Blazers head coach Chauncey Billups, um, asking him about, you know, what Amphrey Simons has learned while he's been out hurt. And Chauncey Billups in that response said, yeah, we can't wait to get our best player back. You think that you think that dude's coming off the bench? Heck no. Um, I don't. You know, I don't. I'm not saying Jonathan does or you do, dear listener. But um, that's the, that's that's all you need to know. Amphrey Simons is starting point guard when he comes back. The question is who. So I think it's totally reasonable. Malcolm Brogdon, the you know, reigning sixth man of the year, goes back to the bench. Um, he was comfortable in that role, or at least said he said the right things and said he was comfortable in that role uh, when the season started. Um, you know, maybe he, maybe he is, maybe he isn't, and maybe we'll never know. Uh, but, but you know, he was he, he didn't immediately throw a fit or whatever when it, when it was clear he was going to be not only coming off the bench but coming off the bench behind rookies, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, every time he's going to start. You know, I've been I've been bullish that I thought Scoot should start and start all year and start from the beginning. Um, I'm not a believer in the sort of like you need to earn it um, <clears throat> because like this isn't high school basketball. The Blazers have promised Scoot a great deal of money, um, and he just needs to play. He just needs to play because they need to find out what they have. Like you need to, this is like in, in like development, in, investing in his development, and that means giving him minutes that he didn't earn to find out whether he can play. Um, it's it, it there's uh, there is no reason to slow play it, but Scoot has struggled enough this um in his in his time that um i'm comfortable with him not starting shaden sharp started off so well and looked like he was really ready for this breakout but he has struggled the last couple weeks he just has not been good um i thought he was um i thought he's had some just like he just had some bad games um a, a variety of bad games some some weirdly quiet games some just like hyper inefficient games um he just he struggled a little bit uh, you know there's ups and downs he's a young player there's gonna be ups and downs all season even 
players who are not 20 years old struggle, but certainly young players struggle uh, to you know with consistency in the league, and he's he's going through it right now. But I assume when Anthony Simons is healthy, and that's going to be like in some time in mid-ish December is the timeline. Um, it's like roughly a week or so into December would be the six-week timeline from when he had surgery on his thumb uh, to return. He will start. Jane Sharp will start at the two, and then you will get Brogdon and Scoot Henderson off the bench. I don't love the Scoot and Malcolm Brogdon pairing because uh, Malcolm Brogdon can just pound the air out of the ball. He can just dribble, 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 and the ball just in his hands, and he is pounding that rock. Um, so I don't, I don't love it, but I do think Scoot needs, to, you can't have Scoot be the only dude who can dribble on the court because he's not a good enough decision maker, um, to, to, to have the loan that, to be that guy. I think Scoot would actually probably be a better fit next to either, um, Ant or Shane Sharp because they're more comfortable off the ball. Um, so, but the, you'll go get to mix and max conversations or combinations rather. Uh, I think importantly for me. When everyone's healthy, I want the person who takes the minutes hit to be Malcolm Brogdon. He's the one who you don't have um, some sort of future investment in finding out what he's what his deal is. He's he's good. Like he's very clearly their second best guard. He's been their best guard. Um, he's like just a lot better than Scoot Henderson is right now, and he's, and he's and he's a lot better than Shane Sharp is right now. But he's also thirty years old. Um, you know, he's probably not going to be on the team after the trade deadline. It wouldn't surprise me if he's if he's off before that, but like I, I assume he will play on another team at some point this season. Um, the Blazers need to find out what they have with the young guards. They need to find out if Anthony Simons can take a jump, right? He played one game. They need to find out if he can take a jump and be, uh, you know, a block, like the, the, a building block. The Blazers have kind of identified through the beginning of this rebuild and uh, or the very, very early, 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 early stages, like role players. Like they've got some solid role players. Matisse Thibel looks solid as heck. Um, I don't know if he'll be the part, still on the team when this team's good again, but like he's a solid role player, right? Uh, Jabari Walker looks like he's going to grow into a solid role player. Tamani Kamara looks like he's already, you know, um, pushing up towards being a solid role player. They're, they need the guy. You can't really have a rebuild unless you have the thing to build with. It was supposed to be Scoot. He's not there yet. But what if it's Ant? What if it's just like you already had him? You already you already had Tyler Hero at home. Like, you didn't need to go get him. Um, so they need to play Ant. They need to play Scoot. And they need to play... Um, and they need to play Shea. I, I want, you know, Amphrey Simon's playing north of 30. Shea and Sharp, I don't have to worry about it. I, I, Chauncey's going to play him 38 minutes no matter what. Um, but uh, Scoot Henderson only played 21 the other nights. It was a close game. They really wanted to win, and they went out and won it. I, Scoot needs to play more than that. And So if someone's going to take the hit, I think it should be Malcolm Brogdon. Um, and, and my guess will be Ant and Shea, and then you'll get Brogdon, Scoot off the bench. Uh, the three-guard lineup has a starting group I don't like. The Blazers' identity has been that they're, they're pesky and, and plucky and physical on defense. You have to start Tumani or... Um, or Matisse, and particularly Tumani because of the physicality he brings on that end. Um, and you may, you're not, maybe not going to close with him more on that in a moment, but um, it's like you, you need to play to your identity, and their identity right now is not guard-heavy. The thing is, it might be guard-heavy at the end of games because at the end of games, you need to score. In the end of games, you need to put talent on the court, and scoring talent usually trumps defensive talent in a lot of situations, particularly on a team uh, that is hurting for offense I think Anthony Simons changes that calculation a little bit because he's just a lot better on offense than than Scoot and Shea right now um like a lot so it's that that will change but I don't think you start I don't think Shaden Sharp starts at small forward I think that would be silly and I don't think they will do that but he will have to play there because once you have four competent guards you have to um, it, it ekes into those minutes. And I think Matisse Thibel showed he deserves to play. You're going to get more Tumani at the four minutes and, um, maybe a little bit less uh, Jabari Walker, um, just because you ha you're the, t the group you're going to eat into someone's minutes when, when more folks are available. Okay. Uh, Thanks, Jonathan, for the question. LockdownBlazersPod at gmail.com. In the second segment, I want to answer a question from John, listener John, who wants to ask about not starting the game, but closing the game and who deserves or who should be on the court when it's winning time. Blazers have played a bunch of close games this year. They've had to make this decision often. And John has a question about that. We will... Uh, 
we will answer that in in the second segment. But first, I want to tell you about eBay Motors and winning, building a championship team, like maybe a fantasy basketball championship team. Our partners at eBay Motors teamed up with Lockdown Fantasy Basketball host Josh Lloyd to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week, all season long. So whether you're a daily fantasy player prepping for each and every day on the grind, or you're scouring the waiver wires as a season-long fantasy also grinder every week right here with the help of eBay Motors and Josh Lloyd, I'm going to provide you with players that are guaranteed to fit your roster. So let's see who Josh has picked out for us this week in eBay's Guaranteed Fit Fantasy Picks of the Week. Josh has got a couple here, but the one you're going to be excited about, if you're a Blazer fan, he might be chilling on the waiver wire or he might be there available in DFS. Scott likes Scoot. Or excuse me, <laughs> Josh likes Scoot. He does. He likes Scoot. Josh says it's going to be rocky for a bit, but Scoot is back, and his value and his minutes are going to rise. If you can afford some bad games, he's worth grabbing. Look, Scoot Henderson has not been an efficient basketball player this year. I think he's been pretty clearly a negative basketball player, although there are some advanced stats that paint Scoot Henderson as an excellent defensive player. Um, I'm not sure my eyeballs see that just yet, but... My eyeballs want to believe. But on offense, you can see him, just the the, the moments of him figuring it out. Uh, I thought he looked better against Indiana getting to his spots in the mid-range. He missed shots. He's made multiple threes in back-to-back games. Um, you know, he's, like I said, he didn't play a ton against the Pacers, but I think he's going to play 28-plus minutes a night, 27-plus minutes a night. Um, and he's the Blazers are going to give him the ball and let him have a chance to figure it out. And he has... Um, you know, while he hasn't been good yet, and he hasn't had that 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 sort of eureka game, light bulb ga- light bulb game, where it's like, oh yeah, Scoot, this is why he was the, the you know number three overall pick. This is why he was highly touted as as a really solid draft prospect, and everyone was so excited about him. He hasn't had that game, but he's gotten better. He's taken little baby steps in the right direction, and uh, you know, coming off this injury, now wearing goggles, and I think the goggles are, are going to unlock him. The power of the power of sight is going to unlock Scoot. Um, so you know, listen to Josh and go grab Scoot in fantasy basketball. Josh Lloyd, host of Locked On Fantasy Basketball, is going to help you win your fantasy championship. And eBay Motors knows the championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. It's the same with your vehicle, and with over 122 million parts, your number one ride or die. You can make sure your ride stays on the road smoothly. So whether you need brake kits or LED headlights or roof racks or a new bumper. Whatever your baby needs, eBay Motors has it. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or your money back. Plus, these prices, you're burning rubber, baby, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. All right. Let's keep it rolling. We got another mailbag question. Lockdownblazerspod at gmail.com is the place to send your questions. First question from Jonathan. This next one's from John. It's a John Heavy episode. John wants to know a, a question about Chauncey Billups' closing lineup choices in close games. He notes that against the Milwaukee Bucks, there was Malcolm Brogdon, Scoot Anderson, Shaden Sharp, uh, Jeremy Grant. DeAndre Ayton. Then against the Pacers, it was Brogdon Sharp Thibel Grand Ayton. And John worries that in both of those situations, that Scoot and Sharp probably don't deserve to be on the court ahead of Tamani Kamara, who had been closing games earlier in the season when the lineup and health was a little bit different. John wonders if prioritizing the young guards, Scoot and Sharp, is coming at the expense of winning games and also the expense of rookie Tumani Kamara who gets some development too, because he's a young player trying to get better. So uh, if you're a long-time listener to the program, you know that lineup stuff is the thing that I like. I kind of, uh, I nerd out about it. Um, I, I probably haven't hit you with the lineup data too much in this season because a little bit early and, and then injuries, just like we haven't seen groupings play together um, a bunch. And also a lot of it's been bad. <laughs> And y'all don't, y'all don't need, like, statistical negativity. We try to have a little bit of fun here, even if we keep it real about how the Blazers have struggled. Uh, but 
but who plays and when? Like who's on the court when it matters? That 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 um, strikes me. That is something that I always notice. And to me, it stood out very loudly that at the end of the game, Matisse Thibel was on the court and not Scoot against the Pacers. You may recall me complaining in the first segment that Scoot didn't play enough. You know, it's feel with Chauncey. Um, he's still, you know, this is a brand new group. Uh, and he's still trying to feel what f- for what works. Early in the season, Tumani is what worked. But I think he has been. Um, oh, I was gonna say, I was gonna use the word detrimental, but I think that might be a little strong. He's been bad on offense, and I think um, his decision making and um, some of the some of the sort of rush shots he takes and the way teams don't guard him. Uh, the combination of his own decision making and the way he gets treated, and then his, um, you know, when his ability sort of ta- attack when they're not guarding him, I think he's hurt the offense a little bit. The offense is already bad; like <laughs> he's not hurting it that much, but it's. Um, I think he's hurt it a little bit. So I can understand why he's not on the court to close games because you need theoretical offense, like e- even if it's not functional offense, because the Blazers are not very good on offense. Like I can understand why against the Bucks with um you know when the bucks weren't super big at in the closing lineup they weren't they weren't gigantic they weren't gigantic i think that's like a, a small an important note here they can play huge if they want to um but you know you could play three guards and i think the cre- they wanted creators out there that that was a decision against the bucks right it's like you want more guys who can attack because they just couldn't score. They had, they had they'd had so much trouble scoring in the second half. It's like, let's put players who can get out and dribble and get us into stuff and get in the mix and uh, more people who can attack the rim, more people who can create their own shot. You know, Scoot's going to create some bricks. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> and Shane Sharp's not exactly a great self-creator too. So I'm not suggesting that this is like um, easy, like an obvious fix or whatever, but I can understand the logic. And then like, I thought Matisse Thibel played well and he's done well both shooting from the corners and attacking um, off closeouts or attacking when he has eating up space a little bit. And um, he's been a slightly better decision making, but he had two just outrageously bad, including the behind the back one, which is worse than the inbounds one, but less impactful um, late in the game against against the Pacers. So, you know, I think I think my my read on it is that Chauncey is playing it sort of by feel and who's playing well and who's got it rolling and who he trusts and 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 that and he doesn't have a set lineup um i probably don't feel as strongly as listener john about um you know prioritizing developments and letting the young guys out there like i i feel the blazers hopes are that one of, and hopefully both, Shane Sharp and Scoot Henderson becomes a star in the league. Tumani Kamara is not going to become that. Tumani Kamara is a great find, a fun player, but he does not have the tools in the bag. He's not wearing that on the tool belt to become a star. He has the tools to be a really solid, you know, you know, fifth starter type, or maybe maybe slightly better than that if he, if he becomes a better shooter. Uh, it, but like... I'm okay playing the guards because that's the future of the franchise. And I'm okay even prioritizing the guards and losing games because that's the future of the franchise. But I understand the concern. Um, who should play? Like, who do, like, if, if that's kind of the question that John Assey wants me to, like, um, put an address on it, <laughs> to steal a phrase. And my address is, I don't know. I think it's, I, I'm with, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I have probably not been a particularly ardent supporter of Chauncey Billups in this space. Um, I've been mostly a doubter, but I do think like I kind of understand the like this team's not good enough and this team's not established enough to say, here's who we play at the end of games. I wish sometimes it wouldn't be sharp, Shane Sharp, because I think sometimes he just it just clearly doesn't have it. But he's just so dynamic that I understand why he'd be out there over anyone else. Um just his size, his, his, you know, his slashing ability, his, his, when he's on his effort on defense, like, yeah, play him. I think he's, he's a lock. Jeremy Grant's a lock. Uh, Aiton is almost certainly a lock unless some very weird small ball lineup comes up. But even then like play Aiton and hopefully he punishes switches. If the Blazers ever remember to pass it to him and he ever fights for position hard. Um, But like, 
I think you you figure it out, and I think it gets. I think you you have to figure it out in each moment, in each game. Um, and I I don't know that Tumani to me has like earned it over them. Although in some lineups you might you might want to have them a little bit, and and I think it gets even trickier with the starting lineup stuff. It's like at at the end of games when Brogdon is healthy and when uh, Ant is healthy. You probably have both of them on the court at the end of games. So then you're only going to have one of the other guards, and it's almost certainly going to be Shaden Sharp for size purposes. So then you're not going to close games with Scoot if it's close. And that to me seems that that is when it gets troublesome about sort of the the overlap of the of the level of of like who's talented on the roster. The the overlap is is does become an issue because winning isn't that important. Development is that important. And if you and if you have to say, okay, well we well, the, the only way we can win games is to sacrifice development. It seems like it seems like you're making the wrong choice. So we'll, we'll see when when games get close and we're like you know into that second week of third, second and third week of December and what those decisions look like. And then we'll kind of revisit this because who plays and when matters to me, and who plays at the end of games is uh, is is going to be a fascinating thing to watch. Thanks for pointing that out, John. Even though I think. I think I don't agree with you in the end. <laughs> I, th- I think I do. I think I um, where I landed is that I just straight up you are more passionate about about uh, it than I am, and I think it largely doesn't matter, and they should just feel it out each and every game. Okay, uh, how about a question about the most important thing to watch the remainder of the season? That's one I got tonight from someone in a pickup game, and I will share that one with you. Before we do that, let's talk FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book, and they want to give you some free money. So go to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get in on the offer. Here's what you do. You visit that website, FanDuel.com slash LockedOn, and then you place a $5 money line bet on any team to win. So whatever that is, when the Blazers pop up on Thursday and play the Cavs, get crazy. Get cra- pick, them, pick them to beat the Cavs. And then when they do, when they shock the world, on uh, this time they were able to guard uh, Donovan Mitchell, which they were not able to last time. You get $150 in bonus bets to play with. And then you don't have to bet on money line. You can bet on everything like spreads and over-unders. You can live bet games. You can place futures bets, whatever you want to do. And you don't have to just bet on the NBA. They got every sport you're looking for. So go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and check it out. That's FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Still a pass first point guard. I'm still Mike Richmond. You are still listening to Locked on Blazers. We're still rolling along with a special delivery mailbag episode. This last one comes from Mike from my pickup game. Here's a quick scouting report on Mike. Strong right-hand driver that he's going to leverage into taking mid-range jumpers. Loves to stop elbow and in between the elbow and about that third hash. Um, strong with the shoulder, so he's going to get space. Pretty good athlete. Um, really good defensive player, especially on the ball, but can get caught over helping as a defender. He's a really good help defender, but can get caught over helping. Uh, so pay attention when he's man is opposite you because maybe you'll get some open jumpers leveraging his, his willingness to help. Uh, that's a quick scout on Mike. If you're playing against him, Mike asked me today, I said, I need a mailbag question. What do you got? He's a real person, Mike B. I swear, I said Mike. Two John, Jonathan John, and then someone who also has the same name as me. What a world! Um, but Mike B. asked, like, what's the most important skill development for the remainder of the Blazers' season? Right, like if you're watching this team, what's the most important skill? And we both agreed that it's that Scoot Henderson finds something that he can do on offense. Not like anything specific, but like broadly speaking, what's a go-to move for Scoot? Can he? Does he have a floater? Does he have the pull up? Does he get all the way to the rim? Does he become uh, someone who gets to the foul line a bunch? Like, can he score in the NBA? Like, can, and what way can he score? That's the most important development. Because if he can't, if he's not an offensive player at all, um, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I, it's like when to panic on Scoot is, I think, like a actually like a decent mailbag question. It certainly is a now. I, I, I joked in an earlier podcast, it's like 35 games. And I do think it is like closing in on the midpoint of the season. If he if he hasn't had not just one game, like a stretch where you're like, oh, yeah, I can see it. And then he might have a stretch where he sucks again. But it's like a stretch where it's like, oh, yeah, 
sure, I see it. Um, then it's time to panic. But 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 both me and Mike B agreed that the the number one thing is like Scoot developing a, some kind of offensive go to move, some kind of arsenal that you could, that is dependable, and then you can build from there. Like okay, here's my base, and here's what I know works, and now I got to expand because if you have don't have anything that you know works, you can't expand. So with that obvious one out of the way, what's the most important skill development for the Blazers for the remainder of the season? A lot of them kind of come in that I think are unfair. It's like, it would be nice if DeAndre Ayton set big physical screens. I don't think it's going to happen. It'd be nice if Jeremy Grant passed the ball on the move more. I think he's gotten better at that a little bit this year, especially, especially when he gets kind of deep into the paint and sees bodies. He's he's gotten better at the kick out from like getting to the paint and kick it out, but he's not going to become this high level creator, pick and roll operator, passer off the move. Like It's just like, it's not who he is. Right now, he's a bucket. I can't complain about Jeremy Grant's game. Uh, that, that those would be those would be special. Amphrey Simons becoming someone who gets to the free throw line a lot, who leverages his his really high level athleticism to draw free throws, um, seems unlikely. Uh, he's 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 taken a lot of strides on offense without adding that, and seems like it is rare um, year six to all of a sudden be someone who gets to the foul line after really never doing it. So like. Those would be dream developments, but I think a reasonable one is Shaden Sharp becoming a good finisher. He's a bad one right now. But he has the tools to be a really good one. He jumps so high and so easily, and he can stay in the air for so long, and he kind of leverages and understands that leaping ability in a really special way. He's What he's done with that leaping ability is draw fouls really well because he's strong. He can jump into contact and hang into contact and use angles to get himself, you know, get around arms or get caught by someone's uh, by a swipe and, and, and take contact and get through the contact or get, you know, get a shot up through the contact and draw a foul. Like he's, he's leveraged that athleticism to become better at getting to the free throw line, which is a really, really important skill for good players. But the next thing is Shane Sharp becoming a finisher. For me, that's the skill. If What if Shane Sharp just made layups at a high level? What if he got, um, what if instead of being a below average finisher, he was above average finisher? He has the tools to do that. He is capable of that. The most important skill development for me the remainder of the season is Shaden Sharp's finishing ability. If he becomes an elite finisher, some a skill you absolutely can improve at, something um, Damian Lode in like year three of his career, he all of a sudden like started to make layups at a high level and it changed his game completely. Um, Sharp can get there. For me, that's the biggest skill development that for the season because if he can do that, if he can get to the rim and finish at the rim, then he's... You know, then then the the finishing skill gets there, the foul drawing gets there, and you know he's it'll get easier for him with better teammates. When Ant is healthy and when and Brogdon is healthy, it's just like more time when other when other guys are drawing attention and Shaden Sharp can attack in the cracks, like um, as a cutter, as as like he's a smart off ball off ball cutter, as someone who can spot up and then uh, attack against the you know a, a bent defense who was all focusing on the other side of the court. Like I I think he can. I think he can develop the other parts of his game comfortably, but the finishing is a skill that he needs to develop um, and something that you certainly can. So that for me is the biggest thing uh, for the for the biggest skill development for the Blazers that would kind of change their their course through the, through the season. Thanks, Mike B. Um, lit me up today. Had to guard him all night. Lit me up. <laughs> couldn't hang. I knew it was going to drive right. Couldn't hang. Um, okay, here's some Blazer news for you, and we'll talk about this in future shows too. Uh, the in-season tournament is set. Uh, at least the quarterfinals are set now. The Blazers, uh, spoiler, did not qualify. Only won one of their four in-season tournament games. But because uh, it's set, now we know who the Blazers games uh, 80 and 80, 81 and 82 will be. Uh, Wednesday, December 6th, they're at Golden State. Uh, they're added to the schedule tonight at Golden State. Uh, Warriors didn't, didn't Make it. Sorry, Dubs. Um, had to beat the Kings by 12. Instead, they lost because they were 
horrible in the final minute of the game. Uh, two turnovers in the with up four, up four with the ball with 45 seconds left and did not attempt a shot inside 36 feet. Incredible ending to your Warriors. The Blazers will play them on December 6th, Wednesday in San Francisco. And then that Friday, December 8th, Blazers home against the Mavs. So two games added to the schedule, Warriors and Mavericks. Uh, chance to see Luka Doncic in Portland, which is fun. And I don't know, Warriors, War, I, it's different now because... The Blazers don't have Oakland's greatest son um, on the roster, but I would say sort of a once fake rivalry. Um, Yeah, it'll be you get that one on a Wednesday night, you get a Friday night home game with with Luca and uh, Kyrie Irving in the building. Uh, That's your that's December 6th and December 8th. That's your news. That's your mailbag. If you want to send me a mailbag question, <clears throat> excuse me. If you want to send me a mailbag question, locked on blazers pod at gmail.com is the place to do it. Come back for tomorrow's show. We do this five days a week, wherever you get podcasts and also on YouTube. I appreciate you listening. I'll talk to you soon.